Well, let's get to work on a motorcycle. Uh, not the poverty glide right now. That carburetor can uh, sit and wait. And uh, I hate that I store things like everywhere. Very unorganized. Our friend today is Yammers. Uh, when I take off the side bags, they have these little plastic caps that cover where your luggage goes. I've got them. I was just lazy and didn't put them on. Bike's dirty because we live on a dirt road, but things got a coolant leak. <clears throat> I tend to believe that it's the coolant reservoir, but I want to take the fairings off. And I also want to take the windshield off because I've got some mounting bolts on this side that are broken. See how it's floppy? And that's not good on a bike that can do uh, multitudes over the speed limit. Let's just say, you know, I'm not going to say how fast this bike goes. It goes very fast. But yeah, we're going to tear into it a little bit. I also have a new set of driving lights. Um, those were cheap Amazon BS ones, and uh, one of the brackets broke on the other one. So, I've got some good driving lights to put on it. So, if I get the fairings off, I'll have plenty of room to work on it. Because um, right now, the driving lights, that's our, our heated grips, and this is our driving lights. And... Uh, I could probably reuse that button and that light and just use the new driving lights that I've got. I'm a little intimidated by this job. I looked it up on YouTube and all the videos on it are extremely boring and awful and not very descriptive. So I'm kind of at a loss. And you know, when you see something on YouTube you don't like, it's a good practice to just make a better version of it. Especially if you have all the camera equipment that I have. I don't know if this is going to be that attempt. Because I would much rather fix the bike than film a video. So bear with me if uh, everything here is a little wonky. As far as edits and everything is concerned. Because I don't really care to film today. And for me, when I don't want to do something, it's better to do it anyway. Because, you know, that's part of my ADHD and... Whatever the opposite of obsessive compulsive behavior is. So, the goal of today is uh, tear into this thing and find that coolant leak because uh, it's quite annoying. Check the headlights. I always forget where the turn signals are. Left turn signal, right turn signal, four ways. Uh, brake light, I'll just have to rely on that camera. I'm pretty sure a brake light works. But yeah, we'll get it up on the center stand. I'm gonna back it up a little bit, just so I've got more room to walk around. Get up on the center stand and uh, get to uh, stripping it's a pretty heavy bike and when you put it up on the center stand you got to be you got to be pretty angry about it there you go up on the center stand main goal of today is uh I need to find the coolant leak. And I would like to get those new driving lights installed. So let's give it a whack. So I've been told doing this job isn't that difficult. We've got fasteners like that. I don't think I need to go up here. But this, I want this panel off. Because as you can see, it's like a coolant leak, right? And I heard tell that these coolant bottles, 
brake all the time. I don't know if you can see it here in the video, but the exhaust header is like right there. So there's a lot of heat in this general area. So I think maybe the coolant bottle is bad. I'm hoping it's not a cracked radiator, which is this guy right here, all up in there. But first thing we're going to do is see about getting that fairing off. I want to see what's going on under here. And an added benefit is I'll be able to uh, wire up my driving lights with all this crap out of the way. I don't know if I'm going to strip everything off, but another major thing I need to do is reattach this windshield. It's literally only held on by this side, so <sighs> a lot of things to do. It's intimidating. All right. Everything's present and accounted for. I really don't know where to start. We'll start anywhere. I really wish the YouTube videos were a little bit more helpful, but they are not. These fairings right here, you can push them out in two different settings. Right now I have them pulled out all the way to help block the wind. That's my, my, my winter riding setting right there. Okay, so we got all the screws. We can get this guy out of here. Disconnect the turn signal. And there we are. While I got this thing out, I can clean it up. Oh, look at that. Got ourselves obvious coolant spills, right? But yeah, we'll we'll clean all this up. It looks like it came out of the friggin' ocean right there. Plastic motorcycles. While I got you here, let's take a closer look at how this thing's built. The previous owner put these, uh, Crash bung is what it's called, the crash bung. And uh, I've got highway pegs right there. Three so add oil right there is where you check oil. I don't know if you can see it right there. I'm not using my good camera. There should be a window right here that shows you your oil level, oil filter, oil drain. This is the hydraulic clutch, the shift lever, or shift arm, shift lever. See how it works right there? That's like how you shift the transmission. It's got two settings on the rear shock, hard and soft. This is for the lock to get under the seat. Um, rear passenger pegs, which need to be lubricated. That's awful. Let's get closer to construction. So that's what forged aluminum right there. And uh, let's talk about this later. There's our coolant bottle. And you know how I was telling you that it's really close to the exhaust? We got some moisture there. That's the headers right there, four cylinder. And between there and here, they don't have a heat shield or anything. It's just the plastic bottle. The bottle looks kind of new. So it's possibly been replaced. Um, I am going to remove it just to inspect it. And then this is, this would be coolant overflow right here, I believe. It would just go straight to the ground. Uh, but you see, definitely evidence of coolant leaks, right? 
Um, I also see some crappy wiring. <laughs> oh man, I, I, what are we doing here? Seriously? Anyway, this is going to give me opportunity to install my driving lights the way they should be installed without crappy wiring. I'm I'm not I'm not the most OCD person when it comes to like building and creating and stuff. I'm not much of a fabricator, but wiring is my pet peeve. I'm I'm pretty good at doing wiring and and making it waterproof and and vibration resistant. Um, so there's a lot there that I don't like. As far as the coolant leak is concerned, this housing right here, I'm willing to bet that's a thermostat. I'm willing to bet that's a thermostat housing. What do you kids think? I'll have to look it up on the internet. Um, but we could take that apart, clean it. If it's got an O-ring, I can replace it. I'd kind of like to get this panel off just so I can get to it a little bit better um, I'm gonna take a vote and say that I'm gonna do that I don't want to have to bend and struggle to get to any of these parts so I'll, I'll go ahead with the disassembly of the rest of it you know take the mirrors off and everything <sighs> not too happy about it but you know, sometimes we got to do the things we got to do. Things get out of hand. I've got a fancy, dancy Harbor Freight microwave, microwave, magnetic cup. I'm going to pick up all my fasteners and keep them in this. I've had this bike, what, a few years now? And it's only let me down once for a dead battery. I, uh... A couple years ago, I had a bit of a midlife crisis. Jumped on the bike and, uh, well, I quit work for a month. <laughs> Jumped on the bike and figured, let's just go to places different than what I'm used to. Which I would advise anybody to do that if they're going through a certain type of crisis. Self-imposed or otherwise. There's nothing wrong with a little escape. So I've made the executive decision to just go ahead and strip everything off the bike. I've owned it long enough that I should do a full service and just see everything everywhere. Give it a good inspection for especially for as much and as hard as I ride this thing. Uh, believe believe me, I, I use this bike to its full t potential. I would like to have the seat redone here in the near future. It's 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 a little the the foam has expired. It's it's not comfortable to ride. And uh, if you're not comfortable while you're riding, you won't be riding very much. This year we have plans to ride a lot. And I don't want to. I don't want to slow down because of bike issues. These little fairings right here are quite nice. They have two settings. You got a a summer setting and a winter setting, right? And then uh, there's another bolt behind here. I don't know if you can carefully. I don't want to break the clip. Yeah, we're not going to risk it. Just for a bolt when I can squeeze in there. Like I said, it's been a very wonderful bike. It's treated me good for a very long time. It's got plenty of power, you know, it's, it's a 1300. So not a whole lot can escape me. And uh, it can definitely get you in trouble. 
get you in trouble in a hurry. It is not a beginner bike whatsoever. I'm going to go ahead and set these in the summer setting. So why didn't that just fall off? Because it's still attached. It's like playing Legos. Looking for all the all the ways it was put together. It hasn't been too difficult to uh, take apart. Sorry if the lens is dirty. I hope it's not. Skirt, skirt, skirt. Skirt, skirt, skirt. The, the cool thing about Japanese engineering is uh, sometimes it's actually done in a way that it's easy to uh, take apart. And you can see we got a lot of uglies in that panel, coolant leak. It's kind of cool that like everything's insulated. And return signal. It's funny to uh, dig around and kind of see like all the stuff that you've dropped inside the motorcycle over the years <laughs> can easily be found. Oh, that's funny. It's going to be nice to uh, clean things up around here. Let's give you a little bit of a tour on this side. So, make sure the camera looks good. Don't see anything crazy leaking or... That's a highway peg right there. That's my normal pegs. Rear brake. The rear brake on this thing I need to rebuild, as you can see, or hear see in here it don't look too good they're linked brakes too so when you press this one one of the front calipers is is being pinched and a while back i accidentally had my foot on the brake instead of the peg and you could tell that i got my my rear brake rotor fried and uh, so I've got a new rear brake rotor and a new set of brake pads for the back. But I was told when the guys put new tires on it, these are the Michelin's uh, Road 6 GT. The cops use these. They're pretty good. Uh, made in Spain, by the way. Fabrique in España. Uh, yeah, I need to do the rear brake on this thing. There's a lot I need to do. <laughs> Back to what it looks like. My battery box. The battery that I found for it doesn't really fit the box, so I had to modify the, you know, where you put your battery. And uh, we're going to continue disassembly. But let's take a quick look. That was the connector for the turn signal, right? Got more connectors, the backside of the battery, cooling fans. Right there. One of them has... A little, little bit of coolant on it. This is the radiator. I don't see any weird leaks. Those are our headers. This one's got uh, Pia horns on it. The horns are really good on this bike. Let's see. And uh, 1107 would make this a 2008, right? I had the forks rebuilt a while back. They're pretty good. I'd love to do the rear. I used to have a carbon fiber, like, fender thing, extender, and uh, that blew off at 150 miles an hour. 100 uh, mile, uh, kilometers an hour. <laughs> so she's getting stripped. I want to continue. I want to strip some more. Once you get on a roll, you don't want to stop. Well, let me show you something. So, on Dr. YouTube, 
they tell you to remove the windshield, right? There's two bolts, one there, one there. Bolts, fasteners, nuts, whatever you want to call them. That is a three millimeter. So you get that off, right? This slides up. See how it's got those little hooks right there? I should turn it around so the sun works for me. Right, that one's broken, it's missing one because somebody tried to just yank it off. And that gives you access to the windshield screws. Now this one might be missing some, like three. <laughs> and this one's missing one. We've still got one there. There's supposed to be seven screws. Oh, shopping list. The problem with used bikes is you never, it's, it's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Um, you never know what you're going to find. Hack crap like that. Uh, this bike's got questionable wiring issues as well. Like I said, you, you never know what you're going to find. I'm going to go ahead and take the windshield off. I'm not going to take that one all the way out because it kind of holds everything. The screws feel like they're plastic. They might be just so they snap off in an accident. There's only one way to find out. And let's drop it on the ground. Plastic screws. It makes sense from a safety standpoint because the screws can just snap off and the windshield won't like decapitate you. Makes sense. Uh, replacement screws, I'm not going to bother trying to find plastic screws. Come on now. So the motorcycle will become a death machine. She's getting naked. An old technician told me years ago, he said, uh, never leave your tools on the ground. They get dirty. They get scratched up and it looks like crap. And anytime I was working in his shop and he saw me leave a tool on the ground, he would purposely just kick the shit out of it all the way out the door, across the parking lot. <laughs> so I make it a habit. I will put stuff on the ground, maybe bolts and nuts and stuff till I can get them in a better spot. But all my tools, always go in my pockets because I don't want the asshole shop foreman kicking my tools halfway across the earth. As we can see, we are diving deeper and deeper into the abyss. Headlights off. You can see the mechanism that runs the adjustable windshield. Windshield moves up and down, right? We have full access to this compartment, which Usually the glove box is sitting right there, right? So that's out of the way. This will give us access to the wiring for the old driving lights, which I'm not a fan of. We can get in here and uh, fix it properly. I don't like what's going on in there. This bike's equipped with a plug for a heated vest, which is pretty cool. And then there is a cigarette lighter type 12 volt in the glove box. But yeah, we'll go through here and fix the wiring. But the main issue is going to be that coolant leak. I'm going to take the bottle off just in case it is leaking. I want to see if there's a leak behind it. And uh, let's do that real quick. While I got you nearby. And you can see it's it's holding coolant, right? So it shouldn't be an issue. This is an ex expansion tank. Let's try to catch some of that. This is an expansion tank. 
So when the radiator gets a little bit too hot, it just pushes the excess fluid into this little tank. And it's right between the low and the high. It just it wants to leak. But I'm most interested what it looks like back here. See if there's any cracks. There's no cracks or anything. We'll clean up that tank though and uh, reinstall it. I'm pretty happy with what I see there. Well, we can clean it on the bike. I'll just go ahead and reinstall it. Um, before I do though, let's look at the radiator. Just make sure everything looks good. The exhaust pipes look good. I think all our leak is right here, up here. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. Got ourselves a little progress here. The uh, assembly radiator cap and thermostat housing is off. Wasn't too difficult to disassemble. There's our radiator cap and there's the assembly. So you can see how it's been leaking around the thermostat housing for quite a while, probably a year or two. And uh, we'll disassemble it, clean it up, and uh, put a new O-ring in it. I'm going to check with the dealer just to see if I can get a new thermostat, because you might as well, right? We'll see. Back in the realm of thermostats, I took the, uh, the housing off, which is this guy right here. And... Uh, I think it was sat that way. I probably should have marked it, right? Well, let's see. It went on the motorcycle this way, right? Yeah, it did. So the housing's off. There's our thermostat. There isn't a separate O-ring. This for surface is completely flat, which is unnerving. Thermostats always have a little vent on the top, so that always has to be at 12 o'clock. Let's see if we can get it out without destroying it. So yeah, the thermostat itself is its own gasket. And I can see where it's been not sealing very well. We'll get in there and, and clean it real good. And uh, I just got to buy a new thermostat. It's fine. We can do that. So I called the dealership and... They won't sell me just the thermostat, which is kind of a mixed blessing. They won't sell me just the thermostat. This one's got a temperature on it. It's 11 Celsius. That's incorrect. That's 71 Celsius. You can actually put a cooler thermostat on these things. Some people say it makes it run better, but uh, I prefer to just keep it stock. Um, the thermostat itself works, you know, it, I don't think I was having any issues and stuff. But, like I said, they won't sell just the thermostat. You're going to get the whole housing, so maybe that's a good thing. Altogether, they told me it was $44.00. A little nervous about that, <laughs> considering how much, you know, this, there's a lot of pieces to what we're dealing with here. So this is the, the plastic part of it, right? And then the thermostat itself, radiator cap, and uh, the upper housing. I tried to clean clean up a little bit. Just in case. But you see it's all corroded and stuff. So, I don't know. Let's see if $44 worth of parts by the end of the week. Today's Monday. The parts will arrive by Friday. So, that gives me an excuse to go to Reno later in the week. Let's do something else on this bike, though. We're not... We can't abandon project right now. Next... Next thing we're going to do, since I, I can't do the thermostat stuff, I'm going to take off what's left of the old driving lights right there. 
pull off all the old harnesses and stuff and uh, get this crap off my bike because I got a new crap to install and uh, yeah it's all good driving lights that I'm putting on the Yammers are from Denali right there these are the DR1s and as you can see it comes with a diffuser so it would be a driving light and I don't know, that'd be more of a like a cornering light. It diffuses the light sideways a little bit. And comes with the spotlight already installed. So that would be a straight light. Here's a size comparison for the stock ones that I had on there. Well, they're not stock, but somebody else put them on there. And these uh, Denali's, I believe it's a three inch. And I might have to get creative with the mounting. As you see, it's it's got a really cool mounting bracket, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. And uh, the previous owner just put it in the bolt that holds the fender on. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do that or not, but we'll give it a try. So I got the bracket disassembled. That's where it's going to be mounted on the bike, right? So I can go like that maybe I already see an issue because that's designed to be used with the carriage bolt Let's see if I can get the camera to behave behave camera you can see this bolt goes right in there and is captured so it don't spin but to use on my bike, I need to do that and utilize the stock bolt. Can it be done? We can, we can find out real quick. We can find out. It's kind of a, a test fitting. I don't know which way it goes. We can always make up our mind later. I'd probably want to put a washer behind it. Just kind of fill in the gap. You know? Not too happy about that. You know, and I, I guess once it's tightened down, it won't matter too much. Especially if I use the right Allen wrench thing. It doesn't, there isn't a whole lot of bite on that. I'll have to use anti-seize when I actually install it. Right now it's just test fitting. So it's on there. And then this Denali, because I want the, as I'm dropping stuff, uh, I want the, the Denali thing to, to be on the top. Because as it mounts right here, I don't know, we'll see. Like I said, this is just test fitting. The stock ones come with just a straight spotlight beam right and uh, it comes with different lens covers and you can swap them out they're built really good uh, so far I like what I see but that's going to be on this side and I suppose you could run like one fog and one this would be considered a driving light because the way it disperses the light on the sides you can one run, you know, either or. I would much rather have a spotlight on this side and more of a driving light on the passenger side. Let me think about it. So I don't know if you saw on the other side, but in order to utilize the kind of the stock hardware, this guy right here with this bracket, I, I can just like bolt it up 
and look the other way. But it really only screws on there a tiny little bit. So I do have the option of taking my grinder and grinding those things off. But I, I don't have a grinder small enough really to get in there. So I think what I'll, I'd rather do is finding a find a, a cap head bolt screw that'll fit right in there. And I'm sure they exist. You know, that with a little bit of a washer. This one's too long. But I think something like that would work. I can also, I've got this little spacer that came off my old one. So we can do it like that. Let me show you. Let me show you. So you could do it kind of like that, right? I don't know if that looks better. I think it does. So, I don't know. We might swing by a hardware store and see what we can make. See what we can make. Because that would be a better, that'd be a better option for me, I, I believe. And then, you know, put the brackets out a little bit further. And then when the light's mounted, right now I've got the, the diffusers. That makes it more of a driving light than a spotlight. And then, you know, it's adjustable out, down and up, forward and back. It'll look something like that, right? Give you a look. Keep in mind, it's not, it's not mounted yet, but... That's kind of what it's going to look like. It, it, it Nothing looks right right now because the bike's stripped apart. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do a hardware run. And I'm going to get just a generic zip tie kit. Just so I can tidy up the wires a little bit. And uh, I still haven't taken off all the... Uh, the other wiring for the kit that's already on the bike. But I could use a brake and run into town for a little bit. Alright kids. I hate that I start everything by saying alright. <laughs> We've got one light installed and I like using the diffuser so it's more of a a gentle light from the sides. This is the side that traffic is facing, right? So I don't want to blind people too much. And it gives more of a kind of like a flood pattern. But down the center, you still got your spotlight. And we had to go get some new hardware. And that's how I'm mounting it with a cap head screw, uh, 5 mil stainless steel. Because uh, I wanted to at least match the factory as far as quality is concerned. We'll get that one mounted up and I'm going to string the wiring harness and stuff. It comes with a really, really nice wiring harness. I'm not going to cut any of it. It just needs to be rolled up and hidden. And uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. The only thing I don't like about it is it doesn't have a lighted switch for turning the lights on and off. It's just a, a little waterproof clicker and it's got adhesive on it so you can mount it to your handlebars or something but it's I'm gonna drill out or try to use the exist, existing spot um, this is a signal wire so you tap it into one of the maybe a turn signal like a running light the rear running light or something uh, and that tells that ignites that tells the relay to use the lights. That way you can't turn on the lights when the key's off on the motorcycle. So I'm going to clean up some of the wiring, run the wiring harness and stuff. And I'm going to be done for today. I'm waiting for parts, that thermostat housing. And uh, I'll do some cleaning here and there. And I don't know, later in this video, you'll see me put it back together.
and ride this weekend. We need to ride this weekend. All right, we've made it back to Reno. We've actually finished our week. Uh, and it's Friday, I get a three day weekend and I need to run and pick up the motorcycle parts that I ordered. They never called me, which, you know, maybe it's just customer service these days, but I'm gonna go to the dealership and see if they got the parts. I wasn't supposed to see that. All right, so the part that I ordered is literally just the thermostat. I thought I was getting the whole housing and everything. No big deal. But I made a mistake. Sales guy kind of walked around and was like, hey, how you doing? How can I help you? And I was like, uh, going to parts. And after parts, I was looking and I saw this a BMW K1600 GTL. It's basically the BMW version of a Goldwing, right? Uh, big old, big old sport cruising kind of motorcycle. It's got 36,000 miles on it. It's 2015 and he wants, I believe, 12,000. Yeah, he wants 12,000 for it. And I was like, hmm, it looks pretty nice. Looks pretty nice. I was smart. I didn't sit on it. And then I told him what I have now, you know, the, the 2008 Yamaha FJR 1300. And he goes, oh, we just had one. Uh, the guy's coming down right now to, to take a look at it and buy it. But it's 2016. And I was like, really? And I was like, yeah, the guy hasn't shown up. He was supposed to be here a couple hours ago. You want to take a look at it? He's like, no, no, I don't want to look at it. So we take a look at it. Here's pictures of it right here. I like the dark blue and it's newer than mine. It's only got, I think 17,000 miles on it. I forgot what the price was on it. I'll have to look it up. But I was looking at that and I was like, damn. And he goes, we just got one from Japan and it's still in the, in the crate. And, uh, we're having a tough time trying to sell it cause you know, nobody really buys those bikes anymore. It's not a cool bike. And I was like, can I see it? And he goes, yeah, it's still in the crate, though. And I was like, I want to see it. And he goes, yeah, we go see it. So we went all the way back through the shop. And there it is. In a crate. It's got some shipping damage, but... Like, the, the, the crate's all dusty and stuff. and Like, I just... And it's brand new. It looks just like the other blue one, but it's brand new. Oh, it's got me thinking. It's got me thinking that thanks to a, a bad thermostat, I should buy a new motorcycle. <laughs> no. Tell you what, cat. You, you find a mouse in here, I'll give you $100. Go on, get up there. Up. There you go. Did you catch a mouse yet? You better get on it. Speaking of things of getting on, it's Yammer's time. After a long, horrible night of dreaming about brand new motorcycles, how come we just don't fix what we have? Speaking of fixing, I have, oh, I have a, a tube of goo. Sterling, why do you have J.B. Weld in your possession? I thought you were morally against it. Well, I usually am. But today, we're using the clear RTV to fix some weather stripping. Why does a motorcycle have weather stripping? Well, I'll tell you. While I'm blocking light sources, my electric windshield has these little arms, right? You'll see it over there on the front. On the front of the motorcycle, it raises and lowers the windshield. And there's a bit of weather stripping that kind of goes in the, uh, goes around it there. And I used to have the Permatex Super weather adhesive, but this thing is so old that it turned into uh, a rubber bouncy ball. So using this 
So I just gotta get in here and try to glue it a little bit better than, than what I had. And uh, what do you think, Kitty? That's what I think too. Kitty. Meow. Meow. So I'll put the headlight assembly on, which isn't too hard. That's just three screws holding everything on there. And uh, I would like a new headlight. You see how it's kind of checked from the heat. Um, I don't know if you can replace just the, the plastic cover or you got to buy the whole assembly. Chances are you're going to have to buy the whole assembly. And now that I've kind of started, you know, I got to make sure all the wires tuck in. This is the relay for the driving lights. Um, I think it'll bolt right there. This area right here is where that thermostat's going to be. And uh, I just got to tuck in and make sure all the wiring stays where I want it to. And keep in mind there's a glove box that sits here as well. So that, that'll be fun. But while I've got all the fairings off, I'm going to go ahead and uh, finagle a, uh, an oil change. Since, you know, I don't have to worry about spilling. And tell you what, it's nice to uh, not have the fairings and stuff. Uh, oil plug, 17 millimeter, and uh, my oil filter. I don't believe in oil filter wrenches. Oil filter pliers are the way to go. You never put one on with a wrench, so it don't matter. I also have a poking tool because I always poke my oil filters and let them drain before I remove them. Now I should have a new crush washer, yes, but I don't. We'll deal with that later. On these bikes, the motor oil is also the transmission oil. It smells bad. Most people would uh, let this drain overnight, but I ain't got that kind of time. I wonder what that is. This is where I drained off my coolant, so I will have to tighten that back up. But radiator looks okay. Everything else is okay. You could tell my coolant leak's kind of gotten on everything. Uh, it's 4.6 quarts. Looks like it's getting pretty full, right? It smells awful. A while back, I let a friend borrow the bike. And um, I asked him to uh, service it. And uh, I don't know if that ever got done. I really don't know. So I'm going to crack the oil filter loose now. And uh, then I'll pop a hole in it because I want it to drain. Let's open my pliers. My pliers, they're friggin' defective. I just gotta tighten, tighten it up. It's not, cause there's wide and there's not so wide. Okay, my filter's not on there too tight. Like I said, if I had a hammer nearby, the one time they don't have a hammer nearby. Oh, son of a shnikey. I mean, I, I can just do that, but I'll just risk it. Risk it for the biscuit.
Good thing I got plenty of brake clean. We'll clean off the motor before I get on in there and uh, uh, before I put stuff everything back together. I hear the cat outside. When I offered to let her in, she just stared at me. It's like, seriously, dude, if you're just going to stare at me, you can stay outside. I'm going to get some brake cleaning and rag. Start cleaning. I'll tighten this little hose clamp. Because I drained off my radiator a little bit. Check. So, I've run into a problem. Kitty! Come here! Come on! Come here! Got angry kitty around here. Hi, kitty. No! Anyway. I've run into a problem with the uh, oil filter that I bought at AutoZone or O'Reilly. It's a little bit longer than the stock one. And this is a bracket that holds my uh, highway pegs, right? Well, I took out the bolt on the other side to get the new filter on. Kitty, enough. That's enough. Calm down. So I'm going to have to take this bracket off. Uh, to put my highway peg back on. A little bit of a problem. What do you think? You don't think. You're a cat. Oh, good. You'll get paid to think. Can't you see I'm doing important things? Just in case I drop a bolt. And yes, I realize these aren't bolts. These are cap head screws. Right, kitty? That's right. I don't have to take them all out. I just need to take a couple out of the way. There's a spacer behind them. So I'm just going to remove that one. And we're going to pivot it out of the way and get that screw back on or the bolt for my highway peg. Because uh, things happen. That's the problem with, you know, accessories on a motorcycle. Sometimes they get in the way of the, the stock parts. And that's okay, kitty. It's okay. We'll get it fixed. Everything will be fine. Trust me. So get that one. And this one. So rotate up. Insert bolt. That's right, kid. Put in a lock washer. There's a lock washer on both sides to keep the highway peg from rotating unnecessarily. We'll just get that on there. And then a uh, tip for installing your highway pegs. They're always supposed to go up at kind of an angle in case you lean too far. In my case, it's quite often. Yeah, this, 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 trust me, this bike is scraped in the turns. I don't do it around Red Lady too much because I don't want her riding past her abilities. And <clears throat> I'm going to get the bracket back up in there and then we can, uh, worry about the highway peg. Remember what size. That'll work. Kitty, why so quiet? I always get nervous when a cat's quiet. 
It means they're plotting. A cat would totally kill you, by the way. Hi, babe. Hi. Sterling. Be careful. And, uh, should start seeing some oil get to that sight glass. But yeah, as I was saying, oil is oil is a religion. Everyone's got their their deity when it comes to oil. For me it depends on the application. Um, I don't mind running Royal Purple on a motorcycle. They run it in race motors, so, you know, not a bad thing. Uh, my Volkswagens have always been Castrol. And my Land Rovers have always been Castrol. Um, my Toyotas, I'll use Mobile One in a pinch. But I'll just go ahead and say I'm a Castrol fan. I like I like Castrol. Always have. If it's good enough for a Volkswagen, it's good enough for anything, right? Uh, same with my BMWs. Uh, always ran Castrol and my BMWs. Sterling had a BMW. Yes, in a previous life. Not currently. Land Rovers are torturous enough. Okay, so here comes the oil. It is coming up to the halfway mark in the oil glass. And uh, I want to take it all the way to the full mark and then fire up the bike. Obviously, we need our thermostat in order to start the motorcycle. I'm doing something that I do not like. And that is using RTV on thermostat housing. But I just coat it very lightly on both sides. This is the plastic end. And then we've got a metal end that I'm, I'm hiding from myself right now. So just a little bit on the metal end. We'll put the thermostat in there. Thermostat has a vent that goes at 12 o'clock. And uh, let's make sure we don't screw it up or box o thermostat you would think why would there be a round thermostat in a, in a square box weird so new thermostat you see it's got rubber around it that's the little vent hole i was telling you about that always stays in the top and then thermostat the spring always goes into the metal housing so this is our metal housing it sits on the bike like this and there's a you know how it mounts to the bike itself so we want to make sure to not screw up and uh, it just fits in there just like that Make sure it's timed good. And you can see the, the rubber gasket sticks out around the housing. So we're good there. And then this housing goes like yonder. And uh, they don't like click together or anything, but it, it just got, this just got the three bolts. I should have cleaned up the bolts. This is an unsatisfactory job. But I want to ride the bike soon. And nobody can see these these bolts anyway. It's not like my bike's a show bike, but you can see the uh the bolts are kind of funky. Kind of funky monkey. And everything here is eight millimeter. 
this guy was leaking for for quite a while and uh, like any good mechanic I just ignored it until it got too bad we cinch them down but we don't tighten them yet because you know you could always miss the friggin mounting hole there mounting hole whatever I'm not a mechanic this is this is not what I do for a living at all okay so that one's down that one's down that one's down now I'll give it a little bit of a just a little bit of a tension on there this hose clamp's loose that one's loose right I'm gonna put it on my knee just so I got better better grips it's only an eight millimeter so it's not like you're gonna over tighten it there we go that is our thermostat like I said, I, I don't like using the RTV, but in this case, the customer ain't going to complain. It goes on there like that. Mounting screw right there. Hopefully it's not in the way of my relay for my new driving lights. Button it together. Tight the hose clamps. Put some coolant in it. And we should be okay. We should be okay. We've got that hose tightened. This one's fine. The, the coolant bottle. That's fine. That one's tightened. That one's tightened. That one's tightened. The thermostat housing itself is tightened. I tightened my... This is my relay for my driving lights now. That one's tightened. Just gonna add some coolant. Topped off the coolant, and uh, just gotta just gotta bust a cap in it, and uh, we can do our fire up and let her let her warm up. Warm up enough that the thermostat kicks in, and uh, cooling fans and all that. I don't think anything's in the way, my wiring here. Neutral. And fire.
It's smoking from where I spilled coolant on the exhaust. It's a little cold outside today. Uh, air temperature is 52. Yes, I'm being a little aggressive with my warm-up. Got a little bit of leak right there. Oh, we better fix that. We are making more progress here. I uh, getting the front end put together. We'll get the side fairings on here. I'm gonna polish all behind here and wax it real good before I put the windshield on. But uh. It's, it's coming together okay. I haven't lost any screws or broken much. I did break something, but there's nothing I can do about it. Such is life. So I got everything polished up real good. And you can see the, there's a couple nicks and scratches in the paint, but it's nothing too bad. And uh, mounting the windshield and I'll be pretty much done. I need to change the gear oil. Yes, a motorcycle with gear oil. Um, but I want to make sure this bracket moves. So, power on. This is my windshield switch. And that should rise. So that's good. Sorry for the lighting. But yeah, that's good. And then you shut the key off and it should return on itself. So the, you know how it's got these little rubber things in the back. I should probably condition those so it slides better. But I don't have time to polish the windshield. I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit and uh, get her installed. All right, so we're done. The bike's all back together. I don't have any miscellaneous parts laying around. Just need to clean up the shop a little bit. And uh, I really want to polish the windshield, but I'm running out of energy right now. I've been out here in the garage all day. It came out pretty shiny. I, I, I should replace those headlights. That's usually from heat. When you see cracks like that. And then my driving lights. Everything seems to work. Make sure we're neutral. Power on. What do we got going on?
must have left the key on so the bike is completed yesterday I went to start it up and uh, the battery was dead I've been flicking the key on and off too many times so I'm gonna get it off the uh, battery tender and we got to run into town it's windy it's cold I don't like it I hate everything uh, but we're gonna run into town and get some more pellets for the Traeger uh, I just finished uh, two 10 pound Boston uh, pork butts and uh, we're gonna have that for dinner tonight and uh, you know like I said this is a motor motorcycle video so let's talk all about dinner Anywho, we're gonna hit the road recording we're actually recording on the side camera let's record on the top camera so this is the first time the bike has touched pavement in a few weeks and uh, at the end of our dirt road here and uh, I could smell a coolant leak still I don't see it leaking on the ground or anything I'm hoping that's just residual like from where I spilled coolant all over the motorcycle because you know that's what professional mechanics do but we're gonna ride into town here uh, the bike has 39,849 miles on it um, so far it feels really good I got the suspension set uh, to its softest settings because uh, I'm just in for a comfortable ride today it is 54 degrees it is attempting to be nasty weather um, they were calling for snow and a whole bunch of other stuff and uh, all the mountains around us got snow and if you look over yonder that's actually a snow squall so it's uh, it kind of sucks that I'm kind of riding towards it it might be rain if it's rain I'll deal with it if it's not I'll I'll cry and, and whine about it on the internet that's what I do for a living I'm not a truck driver I'm not a mechanic I just uh, share my opinions on the internet whine cry bitch moan complain but uh this is uh, this trip is serving as, as two necessary evils. Uh, not really necessary evil, but it's just I needed to test it right and make sure my work is all good. And uh, the bike feels okay; it does its things. I'm using my Hero 11 Mini with the Max Lens mod on top of my head right now, and uh, I don't have the Horizon Lock on. So when I lean, the camera's going to lean with me. You're not going to see the bike lean other than the, the camera. I just wanted to test out that setting. I'll probably change it here uh, on the ride back. Uh, we're just kind of really just going down the street. Uh, there's a hardware store that has the pellets that I like for my Traeger. I could I could use some brake fluid too. I, I noticed my brake fluid's a little low on this thing. My rear calipers has some issues. We're gonna get going here. I worry about the sand and gravel and stuff on the road. It'll get up and go when I need it to. Yeah, it looks like I might be riding into a friggin' rainstorm. I hope it's not raining. I don't have, like, rain gear on me right now. I'm literally just wearing, you know, a sweater and my blue motorcycle jacket sweater. I'm not water resistant, what I'm trying to say make sure my heated my heated hand warmers works the speedometer on this bike is, has always been a little bit off so I kind of don't trust it and then where I live the cops are really bored like all they get to do is, is bust meth labs and 
you know, domestic violence calls and stuff. So they would love to uh, nab a speeding motorcycle. So I'm, I'm trying to be careful with my speed. Wrenching on this damn thing was, was quite a hassle. And I think a lot of it is... I, I kind of want to think that maybe I'm just getting old and out of practice because I would I, I knew the job that I was doing and the tasks that I had ahead of me and what I needed to do I have all the tools to do it you know but I found myself like during reassembly I was like oh I forgot to do this and then oh I forgot to do that and then oh I forgot to do this so a job that should have taken me maybe an hour at the most this is really embarrassing to admit I'll say it at a two-hour job for a good mechanic it took me almost six hours yesterday now keep in mind I was filming you'll see some of the footage here and there's an alpaca. Alpaca! Moo! Um, so that distracts me. Just like alpacas by the side of the road. You know how that'll distract you? I, I just, I feel like I'm getting old, kids. This is, this, we're, we're approaching the end of March. My birthday is May 21st, right? And uh, I turn a year older. I'm not embarrassed by my age. I'll, I will be 45 years old. Up, oh, I feel raindrops. That ain't raindrops. Them snowdrops. I got snowdrops. 54 fucking degrees. Keep your goddamn snow to yourself. Yeah, that's just raindrops. But you can see there's a big old. I think that would be considered a supercell. So, those raindrops are actually probably hail. Yeah, it looks like hail. I don't know if you can see it in the can. Yeah, it's hail on the ground. Look at it. I better slow this shit down. It's not smart to ride a motorcycle in hail. Even though I've got like the really good Michelin tires, I don't think they're hail rated. For some reason, I don't think they're hail rated. I just hope, like, the road's not completely covered. That's getting worse. God damn it. <laughs> oh, Sterling's riding a motorcycle in a goddamn ball-bearing hailstorm. That's too funny. So, kids, uh, what does the motorcycle uh, course say about riding in a fucking hailstorm? Huh? What does it say? Does it say, uh, uh, get off the motorcycle and, and wait for it to go by, you dumbass? I, I, I guess that's exactly what it would tell me to do. Uh, I'm, I'm doing 45 mile an hour right now on a 55. I'm not too worried about traffic coming up behind me. Uh, so annoying. Oh, at least my GoPro is like water resistant, so I don't have to worry about that. This is terrible. But I just got, you know, a thousand feet and I'm, I'm at my des destination up here. Uh, this is the big R. It's kind of like our, it's our version of tractor supply. Get this thing slowed down. Uh, on, a, on, a, on a different note, my uh, heated grips are working perfectly fine. Oh. It's so annoying. Fucking hail. Somebody needs to call the manager. I'm going to walk in there and speak to the manager and be like, Hey, what the F with the hail? <sighs> yeah, kids, don't ride in hail. It's bad for your health. Recording, camera sync, B-1.
beep. So, I got my pellets for the Traeger. And as you can see, it's still hailing. Because, you know, life without struggle is a life not lived. Hopefully, uh, I can get back towards home before this gets too bad. Because right now, it's just annoying. It's not really death-defying yet. And it literally stopped, like, the whole time I was in the store. If, uh, if you come to my channel looking for special effects, well, yeah, I think you got it. I'm going to go out the other driveway. That one's a little too steep. Put my helmet chin on. My chin strap. Let's take it easy. <clears throat> Much anger. <sighs> this would be a lot nicer in a car. I'm going to sit here and wait for a little bit. I need to reset the clock on my, my thing. It's 54 degrees, by the way, so please ignore the uh, the the freezing ice balls that are falling all around me. Like I said, it's merely a special effect. <clears throat> Gotta be careful getting out here. Between the hail on the road and the uh, dirt and gravels. Let's take it easy. Alright kids. Let's head towards home. <sighs> it's been a while since I, uh, you know, rode in the rain and hail. I've never ridden in hail before. This is a first for me. I hope it's, I hope it's as exciting for you as it is for me. Oh, I just realized that because of the hail and the wind and stuff and the rain, there's probably no way in hell either one of my cameras is uh, making a, a good video. Well, I kind of feel bad about that. The whole reason I was doing this was to make a video. Watch out for that white car. Something about people in white cars. Um, one thing I desperately need to do on this bike, other than, you know, I still gotta service the rear, the final drive, because this thing's shaft drive. There's an actual drive shaft that goes to a, to a different, well, it wouldn't be a differential out back. Um, you know, because differential is, is for like two wheels, not for one. Final drive is what we will call it. But anyway, I still got to do an oil change on that. Um, I've got a new rear brake rotor and some pads, but I suspect that the uh, brake masters or brake slaves cylinder is probably bad. So, I don't know. Over here at Chino's, there's a Honda VFR that I want. I'm tempted to look at it. The Honda VFR uh, 700 was one of my favorite motorcycles for the year 2006. Uh, the fact that there there's a Honda motorcycle uh, that has VTEC. I just, I, one of my favorite cars in the world is, is the Honda Civic Type R or an Integra Type R. And uh, VTEC is very cool. I, I've always wanted to experience that on a motorcycle. And uh, he's got one there for sale. As I, I'm, key, I, I'm tempted to look at it. Uh, this would be a bigger version of a of a Honda VFR. It's got my I've got my luggage. You know, I've I can store stuff on it. Stuff. I don't know. I think the VFR you have to buy the the luggage to make it a sport touring motorcycle. Um, but it is it would be considered a sporty motorcycle. I don't think it would be a sports bike. The Honda VFR. It's up to opinion, and I'm here to share my opinion, and, and you have to sit there and listen to it. I, I, any any comments down below, I'm just going to ignore. I, you will not see a like or a heart from any 
for any of the messages that you put down, you will not receive anything. Actually, that's a total lie. If you, anyone that comments on my videos, it will get a like and it'll get a heart because uh, I believe in giving back. And you took time out of your day to watch an inferior video. Uh, winter storm west of Reno Carson. Imagine that. What about the one we're currently experiencing? Huh? Anyway, uh, if you take the time to like, comment, subscribe, and all that stuff, I appreciate you. You will hear me quite often say uh, dislike, unsubscribe, disavow, uh, disertain, um, uh, deconstruct, um, unsubscribe, desubscribe, post subscribe. There's a road grader over there. I want a road grader. Um, no, but I do appreciate you hanging out on my channel and stuff, and, and hopefully this video turns out okay. And, you know, it's watchable. <laughs> oh, man. I'm not going to end this video without uh, opening this bike up, by the way. I have not heard red line in quite a while. And uh, once we turn onto the road that goes to my house... Actually, I don't, I don't want you knowing where I live. That's not the road that goes to my house. It's the road that goes to my neighbor's house. I feel like I need to adjust the tire pressures on this thing. I, I've got... The tires are tram lining a little bit, like it's following the grooves in the road. I'm not too comfortable with it. Some of it might be my windshield's like a little bit too high. Uh, there's a certain angle I like my windshield. I don't mind looking through it. Um, but I, I try to look like just right over it. Plus the, the wind right now, we got like 40 mile an hour gusts. So, you know, that could be an issue as well. Uh, we are going to not take the turn too quickly. And uh, let's see. That sign says 45 miles an hour. You think I can do 45 before I get to the sign? And... Uh, 50. And... 90. <laughs> Actually, that was 95 in second gear. This, this thing will move if you need it to. Okay? Hey, any of you wonder why I don't ride a Harley? <laughs> or a Goldwing. That's that's it right there. Um, that was the first time I've I've ever touched the rev limiter on this thing. I usually shift right at 8,000 RPM. The red line's at 8,500, I believe, or nine. Uh, well, let's see. The actual red line's 9,000. So, uh, thank you for watching, as always, and uh, I will catch you later. Bye bye now.